The social media rounds in the world of long COVID recently have been aflame with long haulers trying a bunch of enzymes, the most famous of which being natokinase, due perhaps to its clot-busting properties, or what's rumoured to be its clot-busting properties. But what exactly is natokinase and seropeptase and lumbricase, and why might they work? In this bonus film in the Microclot series, Dr. Asad Khan and I talked to Professors Risia Pretorius and Doug Kell to get their thoughts. Uh, Doug, you've mentioned enzymes quite a bit on Twitter. Um, what's your sense of the potential that these have to affect these clots? And is this something that your group is trying to study? So, so early on in the piece, uh, uh, there was evidence, not in RCT, but just by treating a bunch of people who got sorted, uh, about removing the microclots or at least stopping new ones forming and letting the body remove them uh, would help using a so-called triple treatment. Now, there are available over-the-counter enzymes that directly degrade the clots. Um, they're available for anyone to buy without having to go to a doctor and explain what they want to do and why and how, and is it going to cause a bleed and all of this kind of stuff, which is what happens with the, uh, with the other anticoagulants. But these are not anticoagulants. They merely break down the existing clots. And on the Twitter uh, uh, especially if you look at the surveys of at organic hair music or in teen clots, you will find abundant anecdotal evidence that loads of people are getting better with this. And you can say, well, maybe it's a, uh, uh, a placebo effect, to which my answer would be, do you know, I bet they don't care. <laughs> I bet they're very happy that they got fixed, whether it was a placebo or not. But of course, it's uh, you know, the point about our theory is it provides a mechanism. The mechanism of microclots, which don't break down, go and hide in the capillaries, stop the flow of blood, stop oxygen getting to the tissues. And depending upon where that is, that can in principle explain pretty well all of the symptoms and post-exertional symptom exacerbation is slightly separate. What are those enzymes? Could you throw some so, names at us for people to uh, look at? Sorry, sorry, natokinase. So yeah. natto is a Japanese fermented food. It's a fermentation by Bacillus subtilis, the soybeans, uh, and the protease, it's not a kinase, wrongly named, the protease that does all of the business is called natokinase, uh, and Japanese have been eating this stuff for centuries by the, by the million, and so it's, it's seen as very safe. Uh, serapeptase, which is an enzyme that lives in the stomach of silkworms, bizarrely, and when they are ready to escape their cocoon, which is the silk, they need an enzyme to degrade the silk. And, and, and this enzyme serapeptase is vomited out of their stomach uh, uh, and is made by the bacteria that live in there, which are actually serratia species, not Marquesas, uh, not pathogen, but uh, uh, they are serratia species, which is why it's called serapeptase. And the last one is lumbricase, which comes from earthworms, and, and I think is, is mostly just a dried earthworm powder. I don't think that people do much purification. But the idea is that especially with the enteric coated ones, enough of them will get through to the lower alimentary canal to get into the bloodstream and have beneficial effects on degrading the clots. And the number of people on, on Twitter who are saying, my God, this was incredibly helpful. No, but it's, it's not an RCT, but uh, there's a heck of a lot of anecdotal evidence. So um, just to, to add on that, natokinase is supposedly breaking down fib fibrin clots, the clotting protein that forms the clot, but uh, seropeptase is supposedly breaking down biofilm, which is uh, produced by bacteria or by bugs uh, to hide away from the immune system. So if, if, you, if you get the, the combination of the two, uh, supposedly it, it helps. But on that note, we are planning a study early next year to actually look at the effect of natokinase and seropeptase if we add it in an environment in the laboratory and a controlled environment, not people eating or drinking it, but on stored blood samples from long COVID patients and any CFS as well. And we would want to see if we could actually induce the clot breakdown by just adding the, the molecules in physiological concentrations in the laboratory to try to determine what mechanism is at play here. And uh, we hope to have some answers soon. Both Doug and Assad will be involved in, in these uh, studies.
I hope you found that insight interesting. But before I sign off, a quick, hopefully painless word uh, on self-promotion. If you weren't aware, I've recently just finished a book called The Long COVID Handbook, which I co-authored with Professor Danny Altman. If you want to know everything that we currently know about Long COVID and have it in one easily digestible place, this will probably be your bag. It's available on Amazon in ebook, audiobook, and of course, hard copy form. And there are some links in the description if you're interested. Look after yourselves. Until next time.